Deceased 3, War of the Undead Gods, continues today. In this universe, the anti-life equation has become practically a zombie kind of virus. It just took over Darkseid, who also got a yellow lantern ring, and it took over Supergirl. Mr. Mixel Pitalik showed up to try and save the heroes, and that's where we are now. Our heroes are about to head off using the power of Mr. Mixel Pitalik to try and stop the anti-life equation zombie virus. This is the Comic Story and Channel. I take some of your favorite comic books, I break them down into a synopsis, letting you know what you should be picking up for your collection and adding to it today. Now, let's get into Deceased 3, War of the Undead Gods, issues 5 and 6. The other ones are linked down below. As tensions between the heroes and the Guardians rose, everyone found themselves at a standstill until Superman threw the first punch that sent both sides into a fighting frenzy. But as the brawl erupted, Batman quickly noticed that things were seemingly off, like their emotions were running a little too high. After a few moments of putting things together, he realized that it was Ares who was manipulating their anger. Before things could get any further out of hand, Superman's own little guardian, Mr. Mixel Pitalik, appeared before the God of War, stating that he wasn't going to let anyone hurt Superman. Even the Guardians knew not to stand between those two cosmic powers. But it was Superman and John who told them both that they need to stand down, that they have too much to fight for to fight amongst themselves. However, there is something that gave the Guardians pause when Black Canary mentioned that Darkseid talked about something called Erebos. Gantha says that Erebos is something beyond a virus that the core cannot wipe away the infected planets, and all lanterns are to report back to Oa to protect the central battery. As Ganthet takes another look to see just how far the virus has spread, he brings up the monitor of planets recently infected, and there is one planet that sticks out with exceptionally high activity. Kilowog looks at it and realizes that it's Bolivox Vic, his homeworld. Immediately, Kilowog takes off, and before any of the other lanterns could follow, Ganthet tells them to leave. If Erebos is at the heart of this, they must call a meeting of the Quintessence. Guy tells him, right, cool. Go decide whether the universe is worth saving by committee. We'll go fight these things. Ganthet tells him no. No lantern is to face off with the anti-living before the Quintessence has spoken. Mr. Middle Pitalik says that it's okay. He and Superman will handle Darkseid and save Bolivax Vic. It'll be a great team up! Bolivax Vic is a planet to 16 billion lives that are all connected by communal mind. As Kilowog arrives, you can already feel the overwhelming emotion, the terror. Before flying down, he's stopped by John and several other lanterns telling him that he isn't going down alone. Kilowog asks, didn't the Guardians tell you all not to engage? And John says that the Guardians say a lot of things. And Guy says, a lot of rules, not a lot of loyalty. Within seconds, everyone is on the front lines of the ravaged planets, doing what they can to save the inhabitants. Superman rushes to protect the innocents, but at that moment, he's punched to the ground by a blue and red blur. He looks up at Supergirl, asking why is she wearing that. That symbol is supposed to represent hope. Supergirl turns to the innocents that Superman was protecting and then using her heat vision, she incinerates them where they stand. Superman gets ready to stop her, but then he's hit from behind by a pair of Omega Beams from Darkseid wielding his newly acquired Yellow Lantern Ring. Mr. Mixelpedalic floats down. All right, all right, enough of that, new god. What should I turn you into, a houseplant, a persuasive essay? All Mr. Pedalic had to do was think it, and Darkseid would have been undone. But Mr. Mixelpedalic didn't have time to think. Without uttering a single word, Darkseid holds up the corrupted mother box and shows him the equation. It was all that it took for a creature many consider to be a joke to become the greatest threat in the anti-life equation's army. Mr. Mixelpedalik began to rip apart his own face. He grew in size and the lanterns quickly surrounded him, trying to stop him. He reached out grabbing John and Kilowog but not before they could shield themselves. He squeezed on the small bubble with Kilowog telling John that he shouldn't have come. But John laughs, nothing could have stopped me. While the other lanterns try to pull Mr. Pitalix's fingers apart, their strength is no match and the fifth dimensional imp crushes the two of them. With no one able to stop the rampaging Mr. Mixel Pitalik, he rockets through the planet of Bolivox Vic 
destroying it from the inside out as he shoots through it. As he flies, he turns his attention to Oa towards the central battery, and he did not stop. After destroying the battery, all of the Green Lanterns were severed from their power, exposing the core to gravity and the vacuum of space. During all of this, the Quintessence began their meeting, and they can see the Erebos has no intentions of slowing down. Hera says that they're about to lose this universe, and the Spectre says that he will not stand by and allow that to happen. Hera asks if he's speaking as the Wrath of Presence or as the man Jim Corrigan, and Spectre tells her both. And just as all hope seemed lost for the Lanterns, a miracle happened. The Lanterns found that their powers returned as the Spectre restored what was once broken. Mr. Mixelpedalic screamed, VENGEANCE! And the Spectre tells him, Agent of Entropy, I am the spirit of vengeance, and I am very pissed off! Clark Kent can see and hear everything, and he can move at such speed that time almost stops around him. So as Bolivac's Vix exploded, he was caught in the planet's destruction, but he saw and heard it all. He watched in slow motion, helpless, as 16 billion lives were lost. For the second time in his life, the man from Krypton was powerless as a world died, but he was not the only one feeling the effects of helplessness. Kyle Rayner too watched as not only innocent people died, but his friends. It wasn't that he lost John and Kilowog. He realized what they had lost, plain and simple. There was no hope to come back from this. But even with the loss of a planet and the anger rising, Superman remained steadfast as he looked at Darkseid. However, Superman did not act on his anger. He didn't wildly begin to swing. Instead, he did what he does best and he told Kyle that they hadn't lost yet. We're still here. But there were bigger things going on at that moment. The Spectre and Mixelpedalic were raging in space, quite literally ripping the fabric of reality with every strike. Black holes were punched in space. Planets and stars were all sucked into oblivion. The remaining Green Lanterns tried to aid the Spectre by slowing the imp down. They tried. They died. However, while the universe hung in the balance of the two fighting giants, the other heroes aboard Brainiac's ship discussed plans on how they can deliver the cure. Barda offers a one-way path through her boom tube, but her priority is on saving her son before anything else. But there's one thing the heroes fail to realize. All the mother boxes are connected, and in turn, spreading the affection from those who are already undead. Before anyone could act, a doom tube opened, and the undead Isaiah leads an army through, ready to kill anyone that they can get their hands on. John Kent and a few of the other heroes attempt to hold back the horde, while those without powers attempt to escape. Lois Lane calls out for everyone to hurry and get to the arcs, but more doom tubes begin to open up. It was at that moment the universe changed. Adam Strange cut down Leslie Tompkins. What transpired that day may have begun decades earlier, but the catalyst was Leslie. Meanwhile, out in space, the two colossal giants continued to struggle and try to overpower each other, but Erebus was in control of a fifth dimension being. He could just reshape reality. So Superman had other plans. He took his anger and delivered a punch of his own to the imp, stunning him long enough that the Spectre could deliver a fatal blow. Spectre told him that he will not win this. The heart of the universe will keep beating. And though Mixelpidalic was defeated, it wasn't before reaching into the Spectre and tearing out the host from within. The Spectre faded, and Jim Corrigan drew his last breath. He told Superman that this universe is a miracle and to not let it fall. Back with the others, Damien and Alfred watched as the woman they once knew, the woman who devoted herself to healing, turned into the antithesis of everything that she stood for. They couldn't grieve long enough as the unliving father of the new gods crashed into the planet. Without thinking of himself, Damien told the others to get away while he keeps him busy. He swung, punching Isaiah in the face, and Isaiah swung back, effortlessly showing the difference between mortal and God. And watching him fall helpless to the ground was a nightmare for Alfred. Without thinking, he moved to protect his last son, Damien, and he screamed. And it was a scream that he contained when the little boy lost his parents in an alley so long ago. A scream that he held in as he ended the life of the three men that he loved. A scream of defiance, of grief, of mostly fury. 
And in that moment, there was a voice that responded across the cosmos. It was a harmony of rage. And in the middle of that scream, two became one, and the specter found a new host. The combination of the two was the spirit of vengeance and the rage of man. They will not allow another son to be taken from him. It was that day that Alfred Pennyworth ended a god. And that is Deceased 3, War of the Undead Gods, issues 5 and 6. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you want more of this, it's been a little delayed coming out, but I feel like we're back on track, so make sure you like and subscribe. And hopefully, Deceased will give us issues 7 and 8 real soon and not delay them again. Don't forget, you can also support us by going over to our Patreon or joining our YouTube membership. In the end, though, thank you to all of you who have waited for this video to come out. I know I've been getting a few requests because 5 came out, and I didn't want to do one issue, but 6 got delayed, so I was just kind of waiting on that. So thank you to everyone who did wait patiently for it. Or not patiently, either way, you waited, and I appreciate that. Anyway, I'll see you guys later right here at Comic Storium.